Hello everyone. Thank you for watching this presentation. My name is Jerry. I'm the founder and president of a charitable nonprofit organization called the National Fabry Disease Foundation. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time today to let you know how you can help us to improve and extend the lives of thousands of people in our country and around the world who have a rare genetic condition called Fabry disease. By viewing this presentation, you can learn about the many symptoms of our progressive, destructive, and life-threatening but treatable condition and help us to recognize and rescue everyone with Fabry disease. Fabry disease is an inherited disease that affects the entire body in its classic form. It has many symptoms that could lead to recognition and diagnosis, but they are usually ignored, overlooked, unrecognized, or misdiagnosed. Viewed individually, the symptoms are attributed to many other conditions, but viewed together, they are puzzle pieces of a single multi-symptom disease. Fabry disease signs and symptoms offer more than two dozen clues that could lead to a correct diagnosis. Overlooked or viewed individually, they may never be understood as part of a bigger picture. Viewed together, they can solve a medical mystery and in some cases answer a lifetime of unanswered questions. The first question you should think about is whether there is a history in your immediate or extended family of heart attacks, strokes, kidney failure, or premature death from those conditions. Fabry disease is usually passed from parents to children, but sometimes it will occur spontaneously as a first case in a family. Because it is an X chromosome linked disease, there is a myth about Fabry disease that females can only be carriers of our disease. In recent years, medical research has proven this to be incorrect. In fact, about one half of the people in the United States being treated for Fabry disease are female. The many symptoms of our disease are very common, but the manifestation, presentation, age of onset, and severity can vary a great deal among individuals. Having said that, however, in almost all cases, our disease is still a progressive, destructive disease that is often not recognized until after irreversible organ damage occurs. One of the earliest symptoms of Fabry disease in children is pain in the extremities, especially the hands and feet, that often occurs with hot weather, exercise, illness, or fever. The cause of the pain is often misdiagnosed as many other conditions as shown in the slide, or labeled as growing pains in the absence of another explanation. Sometimes more intense or longer duration pain episodes occur and are referred to as pain crises. They can last for minutes to days. These frequent episodes of pain and other early symptoms of Fabry disease can cause children to have a severely diminished quality of life. And chronic pain can interfere with an adult's ability to lead a normal life. It often interferes with their ability to function in a traditional work environment. One of the telltale signs of Fabry disease that is often overlooked is a whirling pattern in the eye that can be seen during a routine slit lamp examination by an eye doctor. During the exam, the eye doctor would examine a person for the presence of corneal verticillata, the medical term for corneal whorls. One medical study reported that corneal whorls can be seen in most males by the age of 4 and in most females by the age of 10. Corneal whorls do not usually interfere with vision. There are also a couple of medications, amiodarone and chloroquine, that can give a false indication of Fabry disease. In the next slide, you can see examples of actual corneal whorls photographed using special equipment during an eye exam. Another telltale sign of Fabry disease is a skin rash called angiokeratoma. Fabry disease angiokeratoma are small, round, sometimes clustered, and usually slightly raised red or reddish purple skin lesions. Angiokeratoma are most common in the so-called bathing trunk area, but can be seen on most parts of the body in many individuals. They can be very sparse single lesions or in very dense clusters. Unlike corneal whirling, which can only be seen through an eye exam, angiokeratoma can be found by self-inspection. However, 
They are very easily overlooked and may go unnoticed or ignored by a person their entire life. Please see the next slide for examples of Fabry angiokeratoma. If every person in the world inspected their belly button and the rest of the area between their abdomen and their upper thighs for angiokeratoma, Fabry diagnosis would increase significantly. Dermatologists, as well as most other physicians, can play a significant role in identifying angiokeratoma, but families can have just as great or even greater impact on recognition of this telltale sign of Fabry disease. People with Fabry disease often have a reduced ability to perspire, called hypohydrosis. People with Fabry disease do not tolerate hot or cold temperatures or strenuous physical activity well because of the resulting increased pain and fatigue. Being unable to perspire properly and overheating easily can have a significant adverse impact on a person's desire and or ability to participate in sports or other strenuous activities. Chronic gastrointestinal upset, primarily abdominal pain and frequent, often explosive diarrhea, that are common with Fabry disease can have a severe impact on an individual's quality of life. Other common GI symptoms include excessive gas, bloating, constipation, nausea, and vomiting. Feeling full quickly when eating is also a common symptom of our disease. GI upset is often misdiagnosed as diarrhea predominant irritable bowel syndrome or other GI disorders. Having a chronic illness like Fabry disease can be very stressful for many reasons. The burden of the physical impacts of our disease can interfere with living a normal life. The pain, fatigue, and other symptoms can even make simple daily tasks difficult or cause people to miss out on many life experiences. Coupled with worry about a future with a progressive destructive disease can easily cause anxiety and depression. Sometimes people withdraw and keep to themselves. The National Fabry Disease Foundation provides free, confidential family assistance to people in the Fabry community. This contracted counseling service is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, to individuals that would like to speak to a counselor. Constant or frequent ringing in the ears, medically referred to as tinnitus, and progressive or sudden hearing loss are common symptoms of Fabry disease. Studies reveal that hearing loss in males typically begins in the second decade of life and in the fourth decade of life for females. Dizziness and vertigo, which is spinning dizziness, are also common symptoms for many people with Fabry disease. Fabry disease often causes obstructive or restrictive lung disease. Common symptoms include shortness of breath, medically referred to as dyspnea, wheezing, and bronchitis. Chronic coughing and exercise intolerance are common. People with Fabry disease are often diagnosed with asthma or COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. To this point, we have discussed the many symptoms of Fabry disease that primarily impact a child or adult's quality of life. With age and disease progression, many individuals with Fabry disease experience kidney, heart, and cerebrovascular dysfunction and the life-threatening consequences of kidney failure, heart attacks, and stroke at a relatively early age. Overt proteinuria, which refers to having a positive standard urine dipstick test and progressive glomerular filtration rate decline, aka GFR decline, are some of the earliest signs of kidney decline that may be caused by Fabry disease. It is very common for people with Fabry disease to have chronic kidney disease that requires dialysis and or kidney transplant. Cysts in the kidneys and swelling, especially in the lower legs, are also common symptoms of Fabry disease that may offer clues to a physician that result in a diagnosis. One medical study reported that 50% of people with Fabry disease have cardiac symptoms at the age of 36. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which means a portion of the heart muscle is thickened without any obvious cause, and left ventricular hypertrophy, also known as LVH, which describes thickening of the left ventricle wall of the heart, are common symptoms of Fabry disease. People with Fabry disease often experience heart palpitations, arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, and conduction abnormalities. 
heart attacks and heart failure at a relatively early age often occur. Raynaud syndrome, secondary to Fabry disease, is also common. Neurological symptoms such as complex migraines, white matter changes in the brain, transit ischemic attacks, and strokes of unknown causes at a relatively early age are common with Fabry disease. To review, stroke symptoms can include sudden numbness or weakness of the face, arm, or leg, especially on one side of the body, sudden confusion, trouble speaking or understanding, sudden trouble seeing in one or both eyes, and sudden trouble walking, dizziness, or loss of balance or coordination. Transit ischemic attacks, also called TIAs, and often referred to as mini-strokes, can include the same symptoms as a stroke, but they usually disappear within 24 hours. A complex migraine is a headache accompanied by stroke-like symptoms. Almost 25% of people with Fabry disease experience a cerebrovascular event. These events occur for men and women at the average ages of 34 and 54, respectively. Neurological damage is at the root of many other Fabry symptoms. With hope and help, people with Fabry disease have a chance to live significantly better and longer lives. The average age of death for an untreated male with Fabry disease is about 50 years old and about 10 to 15 years older for females. With treatment available, children with Fabry disease should not have to live a diminished quality of life and adults should not have to die young from heart attacks, strokes, and kidney failure. Widespread physician and family education is critical to change this tragic situation for thousands of people who remain unrecognized and undiagnosed. You can help us to correct this situation by learning about Fabry disease and by sharing this presentation with everyone you know. The National Fabry Disease Foundation's vision is no longer will any individual's quality of life be diminished, nor will their lives be shortened because of Fabry disease. Please help us to make this vision a reality. For a rare genetic disorder, Fabry disease is well studied in the medical community. There have been over 2,600 medical journal articles written about various aspects of Fabry disease. We are also fortunate to have some very dedicated physicians, Fabry disease key opinion leaders, and clinical staff members in our community, some of who are making Fabry disease their life's work. At this time, we'd like to remind everyone to use this presentation as an educational tool only to help your understanding of Fabry disease, to help recognize Fabry disease, and to help with conversations and questions with your personal health care providers. Please do not make any medical decisions based on this information without consulting your own physician this concludes our presentation about the symptoms of Fabry disease. Thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time today with us. We hope that this information and other educational efforts of the National Fabry Disease Foundation have a tremendously positive impact on the lives of people with Fabry disease. On a final note, as a nonprofit organization that relies on the generosity of individuals and organizations to provide assistance and support to our community, we humbly ask you to support us in yet another way. Please help us to provide education and assistance programs for the benefit of everyone who knows they have Fabry disease and for all of the people we are helping to get recognized, diagnosed, and treated in time to avoid a diminished quality of life and the life-threatening consequences of our disease. We are grateful for donations of all sizes that can collectively make a huge positive impact on the Fabry community. At a minimum, please consider ordering an educational calendar that consists of the slides in this presentation. It is a great tool to educate others about our disease, and it helps to support our efforts that will forever change the lives of so many people. To obtain more information or to make a tax-exempt charitable donation today, please visit www.fabrydisease.org and look for the Donate Now button in the middle of the page. I'd like to end with one of my favorite quotes by the actress Audrey Hepburn as we work hard to not leave anyone with Fabry disease behind. She said, People, even more than things, have to be renewed, restored, revived, 
reclaimed, and redeemed. Never throw out anyone. Thank you all.